Hello and welcome to the Sweet Mac tutorial. In this portion of the tutorial, we will be focusing on how to get your Mac ready to go in the Sweet developer environment. We will be installing all the necessary prerequisites. We're going to set up Move Analyzer. We're going to install Rust, and we're going to install the Sweet binaries. Um, before we start this tutorial, please note that because I unfortunately do not have um, physical access to a Mac, I had to rent one on the cloud. So that is why this bar appears. However, the steps in this video are essentially the same as what you will perform um, on your Mac at home. And that is why there will also be, likely be some uh, tearing or visual issues or lagginess with this, uh, with this program. So let's get started. So the first thing that you need to do is navigate, navigate yourself to this website, the SWE Docs, where they will go over what exactly you need and the prerequisites you need, and go to the Mac OS prerequisites, where they will show you all the commands that you need to input. First things first is we have to install Brew. So Brew is a package manager that does not come pre-installed on Macs. However, it is very popular, it is very stable, very reputable, um, community-led. So we're going to go ahead and install it. So to do that, go into your term terminal, copy paste, and should be installed very shortly, and just press enter. And it will get started downloading. Um, it is entirely possible that you have brew installed previously, and it's pretty likely that you do. Um, however, we're going to install it anyway. And after these commands, sometimes the even though they're installed, uh, oh, never mind. I guess it does do the command automatically. Um, sometimes, if you install something and it doesn't, like you try to press the, um, you, you try to type in brew or type in whatever command you expect, sometimes it doesn't automatically go in in that terminal um, instance. So you have to close or reopen the terminal to get it to work, to get it to re register. However, in this instance, brew, it looks like brew does that automatically. But if it doesn't, um, then just close and restart your terminal. Next is we're going to install curl. Um, what curl is, is it's a command line tool that lets you download things from a URL. Um, very similar, pretty much exactly the same way you would in a web browser, however you can just do it. It's explicitly for downloading things and you can only do it from the terminal. Um, the reason why we're installing this is because a lot of uh, tools and a lot of things that we're going to install um, after this require this, um, like the Rust build. So after that, we're going to do, excuse me, we're going to install CMake. Again, pretty likely that if you do any kind of uh, development in C that you already have this installed, but we're going to do it anyway. And while we wait for this to, yep, there we go. We're going to paste, start the install on that. And same situation for Git. And there we go. And just to be safe, we're going to close and reopen the terminal. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install Rust via the rustup command. Um, so we're going to go to rustup.rs. Um, I believe I think this docs also has the the command, but it's you know it's the same command. Um, doesn't matter which one you place, which place you copy it from. And we're going to enter. And we're going to hit enter to choose the default selection. So RustUp um, essentially does two things for us. First, it installs RustUp, and then it installs Cargo, and which also installs the the Rust like compiler. Um, so there's two components here. There's RustUp and there's Cargo, which are two commands. So we type RustUp. Oh, there's the issue that I was talking about again. Have to close and restart the terminal. So if we type RustUp, um, RustUp is a script that manages all the different like versions or tool chains of Rust. Um, so with Rust, essentially there's multiple versions. Um, it, it gets updated pre pretty frequently, so it's pretty often that you want um, to you want to update it. So Rust it makes it pretty easy to do that. Um, there's also in Rust there's two types. There's two flavors of Rust. There's the nightly, and then there's stable. Stable is what's considered long-term support. It's what's you know guaranteed to work. Whereas nightly is updated every single day, um, and it has all the latest and greatest features. However, it is experimental, and there are likely to be bugs and issues. So we're just going to stick with stable, which is what RustUp 
um, downloads automatically and we're going to make sure that we have cargo so cargo is um, you can think of cargo it's a lot like pip in python um, or like npm in javascript essentially it just manages all of the, your dependencies it manages the packages it's what you use to start a new project um, you know analogous to pip in, in npm so great, now that we have Cargo installed, we're going to go ahead and actually install the SWE binary. So we're going to copy paste this. And yeah, there, there we go, we're off to installing the binary. Um, one thing to note is that this is probably going to take a while. Um, it's pretty normal that this is gonna take about 20 to 30 minutes, possibly even longer. It's also strongly recommended that you have a machine that's powerful enough to install this um, because uh, compiling in Rust, the way it works is that you have to, what, what Cargo is doing here is it has to, you know, not only get the code for the, the we're, we're, we're compiling the SWE binary from source, so we have to get the code of SWE, but we also have to get all of the code and all of the dependencies going down the entire dependency chain. Um, so as you'll see pretty soon, there's about 1,700 dependencies and 1,700 crates that need to be built by Cargo. So that takes you know a really long time, or I guess it's 1,900, almost 2,000. And this is going to take a while. Um, one thing to note is that sometimes, like particularly later on, there's a couple of database compiles that are pretty heavy. So it's going to get stuck at like you know I think RocksDB is one of them. So it might say you know it's compiling or building RocksDB, and it might be that like that for five minutes. Um, so don't be alarmed as long as it looks like this just wait 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 eventually it's gonna get there and because this uh, takes so long I'm gonna cut it out of the video and we will reconvene when it has completely built alright so we're still waiting for the SWE CLI to compile so we're gonna go ahead and install node and NPM so that we can build our front end later down the line and the way that we're going to do that is actually through NVM, which stands for Node Version Manager. It's pretty similar to Rust Up, right? Node has a bunch of different versions. Sometimes you want to have multiple versions of the same system. The default way that Node and NPM tell you to install things, it doesn't always work the best. So this, is, this script is generally considered best practice. So again, there's going to be a link in the description for this website and this command. Go ahead, copy it into the terminal. Um, however, before we're going to do that, we're actually going to do touch slash dot z s h r c. Um, and the reason why we're doing this is because this particular script requires that this file exists, or otherwise it isn't going to handle the, the executable file properly, and you're going to have to run this command every single time you, know, you open a new terminal, right? Obviously that isn't ideal. We want NVM to persist in between terminal sessions, so we're going to touch um, the, this uh, .dshrc in your home directory. Um, however, some of you, the zshrc default terminal, some of, you are, some of you are using bash, so actually what you want to go ahead and do is, let's see if we already have it, bash. We don't have bash profile, so we're going to touch dot bash profile, and that is essentially the same thing, but if you're using bash. So again, go ahead, copy, paste, Oh, that was the issue. We you had to close and reopen the terminal. Sweet, and now that we have NVM installed, we're going to install Node. So NVM use LTS. Oh, I guess you have to install it first. So NVM install LTS. Perfect. And now we have Node. All right. So now the wait's over. We have the SWE CLI, and we're going to go ahead and install the Move Analyzer and Move LSP um, Language Server Protocol binary. And what that's going to do for us is, right now, we have this 
you know, little piece of moved code that we have in his example, and there's no, it's all white, there's no syntax highlighting. If we hover over stuff, it doesn't work. Um, so we're going to go ahead and install that. And the way that we do that is, once again, this command will be provided in the video description, but we're going to go ahead and copy paste it into the terminal. And we're also going to install a extension. So go to the extensions page and just search for move and install this move analyzer. So essentially what we just did is that there are two important parts to this. There is this move analyzer language service language server protocol, which is essentially a binary that runs on your computer that hooks into the actual source code and you know looks at what the compiler is doing and essentially it gives you like a back-end server of you know what is the type of this variable like what is the parameters and this uh, extension is what allows you to take that information in VS Code and display it um, so that you have syntax highlighting and uh, you, you can see what types are when you hover over them. And that's really the main the main two things that the language server the move analyzer gives you. Also, if there's an error, it'll show up in the source code, um, so you don't have to. Otherwise, it'll just show up on compile. Um, one thing to note at the moment is that move analyzer it only gives you it only shows you errors um, like it would only she would only show an error here if there was some sort of issue with like there's a syntax error or something was spelled incorrectly. Um, or there's a type error where you, you, you know, give a function one type when it expects another. However, it doesn't give you information about um, specifically the, the borrow check. Or I'm not entirely sure if it's called borrow check, but it's essentially the, that's what it's called in Rust and what, what Move is inspired from. But it's essentially the, the system of Move that checks the entire source code flow and sees if, and sees if, if the, the invariants around objects are maintained. Um, like for example, if you, you know, if you give a function a owned object and then use that owned object later on in the function after you've already given it to some function, that would be a move error, for example. And currently, as it stands, Move Analyzer doesn't actually give you that um, info uh, at the source code level while you're developing. You have to try to compile it, and then it'll give you the error. Um, so that's that's you know kind of annoying, but not the end of the world because you can see the error when you compile. So just something to watch out for. Just because there's no errors here doesn't necessarily mean that your code will compile. But I'm sure that they're you know well on their way to fixing that issue. Okay, so it looks like Move Analyzer has finished installing, and you can double check that by typing Move Analyzer version. Um, and then we go over here, and we notice that all of the syntax typing is there. Um, I did run into one issue where, um, let's see, so previously, yeah, previously, before I, I did this fix, this uh, top menu didn't exist, and this is really, really useful because, you know, let's say I don't know what pack space is, I, I can go to the struct and, you know, hover over it, see what it is. That's really the, the, main, the main power of Move Analyzer. Um, and if you just install, you know, install, uh, run, what is it, this a command on Mac and don't do anything else, I think it's, I think it's possible that that won't show up. Um, so anyway, to fix the issue, what I did is um, double check where Move Analyzer is installed by using the which command. Um, and what this does is it gives you the path in the system of where this Move Analyzer binary is actually located. So what we want to do, copy paste that, command C, go back into VS Code, um, go to settings, go to, um, uh, excuse me, I believe it's command, comma, and then yeah, so we're already at move analyzer. So this is the path where it, I think the issue with on Mac is that if it, it by default, this is just move analyzer. Um, and that's not where it's installed. So I think there might be some, some finding issues there, finding the binary. However, if you just paste in, you know, the, the, the string where it's actually located and then, you know, save the settings, close out. You probably also want to reload the uh, Visual Studio Code reference, but now then we can see we get this uh, this hover text and right click go to definition. So that's how you fix that. And that's pretty much all there is to it. I mean, uh, we have our two most important things, which is the move analyzer and the the move C, the SWE move CLI. And we also have NPM and node installed so we can do our front end later. Um, yeah, so that's it. At the end of this video, we're going to go over 
more about the SWE CLI and just give you know what are the most important commands and give it a test run. But uh, yeah, we have it. Good to go. It's all there. Thanks for watching.